managing the activation of your desktops and servers. Hey, this is the Tom Tom's Tech Show. Today, we're going to cover something called KMS, which allows you to easily manage and keep your systems activated with uh, Microsoft. So it was one of the things I had kind of a hard time trying to describe and get people to understand at my current job. They weren't, I came on as a, you know, head IT person in the company and they just had people kind of doing it on the side and they didn't understand uh, how it works. So I'm going to kind of cover it and hopefully it'll make sense. I mean, I think it does. So um, Microsoft has a way to activate your computers on your network without actually contacting Microsoft. So, so what happens is you have these desktop clients that are on your network and you have some servers on your network. So in our situation, we had a lab and not all the computers were being used at the same time. So we had, you know, literally 150 virtual machines and only, you know, four or five people doing testing. So they would not need all 150 at the same time. So to go and buy, you know, 150 licenses for all of those, when we only have so many users, we buy user licenses for people to use them, but we still need to keep all those systems activated. So we put in what's in here in the middle here in this picture, which is a key management server or KMS. So you purchase from Microsoft a volume license of what you want to be using. So if you're going to be using servers, then you need to buy at least, I think it's a minimum of five server licenses. Um, definitely get enough to cover all of your servers. Um, and for desktops, you need to have at least 25. So before the key management server actually says that it's activated with Microsoft and is working, you need to have a, that minimum. You'd have a minimum of, minimum of 25 desktops and five servers activated against it before it goes, okay, I'm good, everybody's, everybody's all right. So you purchase that through volume licensing with Microsoft. So once you get this key, this key that's allowed for your key management server, that you apply to the key management server and you activate the key management server with Microsoft. So you are doing a connection to Microsoft and activating that server with Microsoft. So we take that server, activate it with Microsoft. Now we have all of our desktops and our servers and they need to be activated. So they activate with the key management server. So the caveat, I guess, is that the desktops and servers have to be stay on the same network as the key management server because they need to be able to go and contact it every 180 days. So every three months, they've just got to be able to, am I still on the network? Yes, okay, I'm good, and that key management is there and still active. So you need to make sure the key management server is active and there's all the computers are still on the network. So um, remote users, so what I typically do with remote users, a lot of our users will have, um, sometimes they'll have a Windows 7 VM or they'll upgrade to Windows. They had upgraded to Windows 8 and then they wanted to go to Windows 10 and then you know the later versions of Windows 10 or they need a quick server to do some testing. Um, what I'll have them do is VPN in to our system and then over that VPN tunnel, they could actually activate their box. And they need to know that at least once every three months, they need to be on the network VPN'd in, and they can go and connect in and be able to activate their system. Okay, now that all this is in place and running, there's some things that we can do. Um, when a system comes up, we can run a script to force the activation. So this is a script for a server 2016. There are different keys. So this is what kind of throws people off when it's on the network. All your computers that are inside your network use the exact same key. This key is actually the exact same key that everyone who in the world who is doing this uses. So you all use identical keys. The, the main part is that key management server that's activated with Microsoft. And these have to be on the same network 
as you know your key management server, you could probably you could move to a different network and reset your change what your key management server is pointing to, and then activate on a different network um, if there was a key management server there. But you know that's you know neither here nor there at this point. So we run this license manager VBS script, and we give it the set key management server switch and give it what the key management server is going to be. I've just made up one here. You could, in your network, you would set up. And the thing is, the key management server is very, very lightweight. It's a very small service that is installed on the server. So often you will just add it to a domain controller or the email server or something, typically a domain controller because it's very lightweight. It doesn't take up much, many resources at all. So, and it needs to be something that everybody can contact all the time. So adding it to a DNS server makes a, a lot of sense. Um, Active Directory controller, DNS server. Then next we add the key that we're going to activate this server with, and that's here. Now these keys can be found um, on a chart that gets updated at Microsoft. So if you, I have done this uh, forever, you type uh, TechNet Appendix A, and that will take you to this page. It has been, I've done the same search to get to this page for decades now. Uh, so if you can see down here, so if you're going to be activating a Windows Server 2019, and you have a standard server, you're gonna use this key here. So everybody in the world is going to use this key. This is the key that you use. If you're going to be doing 2016 standard, you're going to use this key. If you have Windows um, Pro on your network and you're going to be activating those, you would use this key or whatever corresponding key that is you're going to be using. Um, and you can just look through this chart and then you update the batch file here that you're going to run on that system. You can preload these keys and stuff into uh, like an image in VMware so that when it launches, all the settings are all there, boom, it comes up. It doesn't matter what hardware it's on, it gets activated. This just really takes all the worry and concern and things about activating out of the way. If you need to bring up a server to do something for two or three months, you have a test project, there's no issue, right? You bring it up, you run it, you shut it down, or you're going through upgrades where you're transferring data from one version of server to the new version of server, like you're going from 2016 to 2019, or you're doing those kinds of upgrades, and you want to make sure that you know your keys are in place, that you don't forget, because this is often the problem. You Okay, you went from 2012 R2 to 2016, and you forgot to activate the 2016 box, and then suddenly you've been running this new system of software for you know, six months and it goes, oh, nope, sorry, you're not activated anymore. And, you know, connections get dropped and the server has issues because of that. So this just kind of takes all that out of the way. It makes it so, you know, I haven't even thought about or touched or even dealt with anything that had to be activated in, you know, in several years since I set this up at my current company. So um, there is a whole complete guide in Microsoft for how to configure your KMS host, um, how to set up DNS, um, all of these things so that you can keep everything on your network activated. I mean, this is really uh, small businesses as they grow. What happens is they're in the mode because they're a small business that they have to get, you know, keys for everything, especially if they've gotten to the point where they're virtualizing and they have VMware um, running or Hyper-V, one of these systems. And now they're starting to get where they've got 50 people in the office and they're having to bring up virtual machines for them. And, oh, wait, they got something that's not activated and now we're going to go try and buy keys and, you know, and back and forth. So this, once you get, like I said, the thresholds are five servers or 25 workstations activated. Once you get to that point, you really, really need to just switch over to this and start using it and all the activation problems will basically uh, just go away. So I'm going to add these links to 
the client keys, how to set it up, the guide in um, at Microsoft for how to do that. Um, there's some other stipulation, other caveats. I'll also link this document. So if you are trying to activate a Windows 2019 server, you need to have a key that is specific to Windows 2019. So if you have a volume license key that is for 2019, you can host that key on 2019, 2016, and 2012 R2, and you can activate pretty much everything underneath that from 8.1 to 10 uh, to server 2016, server 2019, all those different versions. Windows 7 and Windows 7 Enterprise, it goes back that far. But if you have a server license for volume license key for server 2016, you cannot activate a 2019. So you cannot go forward. You can only go backwards. So make sure you know that as the new servers come out and you want to start migrating and moving to these newer versions of servers, like 2019 is out. So you want to start moving there. So now I have to go get a license key for my KMS server to start doing that. Once I get that applied, updated and applied, it doesn't really affect anything else being licensed. It will still license everything else. But in order to license a Windows Server 2019, I need a volume license 2019 key. Okay. So, well, there you go. That's how you do kind of KMS and get that set up. Um, if you're getting enough servers in your, like I said, enough servers in your environment and dealing with that, definitely move to KMS. It will solve a lot of these problems. Um, about getting activations and things like that done. All right. Well, I make videos like this all the time about technology and things that I do for my kind of my day job that I I do, and I'm just trying to get this as much information out, things that I know, kind of document everything that I do on YouTube. So if it helps you, great. Give me a thumbs up. Um, if you like more videos like this, then just follow my channel. There'll be more videos coming. Um, I also do videos about movies and TV shows that I like and I do movie or videos about um, photography because that's also one of my passions um, and stuff. So if you like any of that stuff, just subscribe and you'll get all that. All right. Well, thanks for watching this today and have a good one.